ideal start as well because my co-commentator is Ken Barty. Yes, good afternoon, Phil. Good afternoon, everybody. Looking forward to this. I mean, that first match is really sort of, uh, you know, sort of puts the cat amongst the pigeons, doesn't it, as, as far as this group goes. And particularly for these two boys, Phil, if one of them gets a win under the belt, they'll top the group and they'll be, you know, they'll be in a, a very, very good position. Should Trump, will, you would feel, have to win his last two matches now to qualify. That would be, you would feel, guaranteed. Seven points should get you through, but up to these boys now. Tom Ford from Leicester, of course, doesn't have to travel very far. Only six miles away from the Morningside Arena. Oh, a little bit wayward with that, and he's given Stewart, I think. An early chance here. This red does pot into the right corner pocket. It looks pretty tight, but looking from the back of the pocket, Phil, it looks like it might just squeeze in. I don't know. He doesn't like it. To be honest, I think sometimes you get a better perspective when you look from behind the pocket towards the red but clearly Carrington feels it's not viable as you know Ken we've had a lot of guest commentators in during this tournament one of those in the early days of the event was Michael Holt and he told a, an incredible story about Stuart Carrington in a recent practice session he made eight consecutive centuries <laughs> Well, the last time I did that, Phil, I was playing darts, so uh, <laughs> it's not happened to me. I must say that's an incredible scoring power. He's one of those players, Phil. That I mean, he's a bit of a, he's one of these that could, you know, a joint killer in some tournaments, and then he might go missing for, you know, another few tournaments. He, he's not one of these consistent sort of players that you would see at, you know, the business end of tournaments. But every now and again, he has a really good run in a tournament, and that's what. Yeah, there's no doubt about his talent. It's just finding that consistency, isn't it? Yeah, all the lads in the players' room know he's a very capable sort who could beat anyone on his day. From a real hotbed of snooker, Grimsby. I always tell this story, Ken, and now we're in... A tactical exchange here in the first frame. I'll tell it again. In 1975, Grimsby produced the English amateur champion, the British junior champion, and the world amateur champion. And they were all different players. Sid Hood, Ray Edmonds, and Mike Hallett. Yeah, he also had Dean Reynolds from Grimsby as well, didn't he? He was, got into the top eight at one stage. Got to the final, I think, <coughs> of, of the British Open, if my mind serves me correctly. I know he lost. Did he lose 9-0 to Steve Davis in the final, big ranking final? Was it the British Open, Phil? You, you'd know that for sure. It was the Grand Prix. Okay. It was 10-0. <laughs> You're thinking of Mike Hallett losing to Steve Davis in the Masters final, 9-0. Mm. Yeah. Tell you one thing about Grimsby. Their local newspaper, the Grimsby Evening Telegraph, covers snooker so so well hmm. I've had my fish and chips out of it a few times <laughs> obviously the next day but great fish and chips up that way as well oh this is not a good shot he's left this red into the left hand center pocket it's a free shot you would feel for Tom Ford he wouldn't be leaving much on and only possibly the red that he's taken on it's a shot you'd expect him to get. Could be on the pink into the right centre. He's gone up for the blue, but yeah, free shot and one. Potted it nicely on pink or blue. I always like watching Tom Four play. He's got a nice, very easy, sorry, nice easy cue action and nice touch around the. When he's in amongst the balls, he, you know, he makes breaks for fun. But I 
good cue ball control. He's made a few maximums in his time, hasn't he, Phil? I mean, of one of the, the players Six. outside the top 16, I, I feel he made more maximums than any of the rest of the field. Well, he's made two remarkable maximums. Seven. One, when he was very poorly in hospital in Aberdeen, he actually signed himself out of the hospital to play Steve Davis. Made a one four seven, feeling really grotty. That was years ago. The other was against Sean Murphy. Made a one four seven in a deciding frame. It's gone wrong slightly. Didn't get the desired connection. You'll see. He's tried to find a gap actually through the through the reds. And he's clipped the red. Now he's knocked this red over the right hand corner pocket. Can he play some sort of plant? It doesn't look like it. To try and knock this red in. Well maybe here's a shot fill. Knock the red onto the black. And try and plant the black onto the red over the corner pocket. It means that he'll have to get the extended rest. And the extension. Does he see the shot though? That would be the only shot I can see. You see the red just left of the black, sort of in a line going, yeah, I mean, he'll have to try and straighten up the black to try and knock the red in, but it's, the, it's a good shot. And if he gets it right, he could knock the red in. The black will stay over the corner pocket. He sees it now. Now can he play it right? It's not easy, this. Oh, good attempt. It's on 4 12. It's not straightforward, this. I mean, the red is not easily planted into the this right hand corner pocket it's not completely in the jaws of the pockets so he's got a if he does play this red left of the black spot there you see it may even go in off the red but it's definitely worth taking on this Well, the red was one thing. One. Ideally, it would have been nice to try and free the black. He's a, a realist, Tom Ford. He's very self-deprecating. Actually, when he won his first group, he did not play well. I have to say that. Have you won the group? Well... He didn't know, neither did I really. He said, I have no words to describe how badly I played. <laughs> <laughs> He's always quite hard on himself. He does love it, yeah, shake of the head, does Tom Ford, and most players will poke foot on him for that, and he sort of he takes it on the takes it on the chin very well. But uh Yeah, he can be quite hard on himself, can't he? Six. Now he's going to play a good shot here. This could really open things up if this goes in. This could free the black up as well. Now oh, he's played that beautiful. And that's a typical Tom Seven. Ford shot. You see the way he played it. Sort of soft screw, the way he held the cue ball. Lovely touch. Have a look at this shot. Beautiful to hold the cue ball for the pink into the left centre. That's a shot he plays very well. Now, when he puts this pink field, he could brush the red just below the pink spot. Bring some more reds into play here. 
as you look, Tom. Thirteen. Fourteen. The late Willie Thorne, who we know both very well, can we both been in the same commentary box with on many occasions when Tom was coming through as a junior Willie predicted big things for him and he plays a very similar kind of game doesn't he creative around the black spot always trying to score yeah absolutely and um, you know as I said he's he's got a great touch and he plays wonderful little cannons and soft screws and got a good sort of control of the cue ball and that's very, very important in break building, of course. He would have learned a lot from Willie Thorne over the years, the great WT. Sadly missed some great fun with him in the commentary box over the years. Yeah, Ford spent his formative years playing at the Willie Thorne Snooker Centre not too far from here. And it was Willie's brother, Malcolm, who used to play on so many junior events for all different kind of age categories. And Tom and Mark Selby mm. used to wipe up, win so many of them. previous shot was pretty poor from Tom just to really wanted to Some poor. get behind 20. the black so he didn't have to use the extended rest and extension mm. he's left a couple of reds here for Stuart, but once again, it's not that easy. He's got to use a bit of pace from the cue ball here to get it out for a colour. Well, he decided to drop it in. One. Yeah. He played the percentages there. He's trying to get the gap between pink and black there, but I thought he might have been better off playing it with a bit more pace and trying to get the cue ball out into the middle of the table, give himself better options, but He's not on the black. And because that red is in bulk, it's not straightforward here to play a decent safety shot. What's he going to do? Contemplating and taking the blue on? That would be risky. Blue ball. Well, he struck the blue reasonably well, but not well enough. I can tell you the second match of the day is underway on table two. Fergal O'Brien from the Republic of Ireland taking on Mark Allen from Northern Ireland. And if Allen plays as well as he did in Ten. his first stage group, which was only six days ago, he will take all the stopping. Eleven. Could possibly leave the cue ball down this top end of the table here. Somewhere near the bottom left-hand corner pocket. Well, 
Well, that's what he's tried, but he's got the double kiss. And now, does the red pass the black into the right middle? I think it does. So a chance for Tom Ford here. Already a 32-point lead. And the red goes in when he gets on a colour. And Fairley should win the frame at this position. One. So it's been a little bit scrappy. But you don't mind that if you win it. In this short format, you just want to get off to a good start. Yeah, a typical first framer. Ford has never lost to Carrington on the Pro Tour. Three. Played three, won three. Four. He actually beat Carrington 10-8 in the final qualifying round of the World Championship last year from 6-4 down. And they met earlier this year in the German Masters last 16. Ford won 5-2, playing brilliantly. Breaks of 124. 89, 77, 66, and 55. So Carrington knows full well what he's up against. Seven. Seven. Yeah, I think everybody on the circuit knows Eight. how talented Tom Ford is, and, but they're also very well aware of his temperament. I think that's what has sort of curtailed them over the years. And that's not a criticism. I'm sure he he would mm -hmm. tell us himself. Tom Ford, eight. That's being his Achilles heel. He'd be disappointed with that. A little bit quick with the delivery of the cue there. I always get the impression with Ford, Ken, don't know whether you agree, that he must play so well in practice that when in a match he misses a ball, he finds it difficult to accept. Yeah, and sometimes he probably, to his own detriment, he'd probably carry a missed shot like for quite some time, where other players would just like brush it off, forget about it very, very quickly. With Tom, sometimes he, he takes it with him for too long. It's another poor One. shot from Shira Carrington. Uh, oh, he was trying to get a nice angle on the black there, or trying to stay on the pink into the same pocket. Problem. But of the two, I think Shira Carrington looks a little bit more nervous. Shira Carrington. Yeah, I think he is, and that's surprising, considering that in the first stage, Carrington was far superior in the standard of snooker he produced to Ford. Stuart Carrington won a group that included Dwayne Jones, Michael Judge and Jordan Brown, the Welsh Open champion. Made a 1-3-7 break that day as well. That was group two in the first stage. Tom Ford won group three. Despite only winning one match, he accumulated five points and got the better of Simon Lichtenberg, Simon Blackwell and 12 times women's world champion Rianne Evans. A good shot excellent shot there from Stuart Carrington had the cue ball gone in it would have been you know you would have felt it would have been framed for Tom Ford now he's in a little bit of trouble here he's got to get the cue ball up the right hand side of the table to cover the red down this bottom right hand corner pocket 
but it's not going to be easy. Difficult queuing in the jaws of the pocket. He could play this red just below the black spot. Try and clip it on the right hand side as we look back up towards the position where it's in now, but it means that the red may be going towards his bottom left hand corner pocket and that's what he's afraid of, so what does he do? What is he looking at here? Well, he's gonna try the shot, is he? Yeah, he's gonna try and clip the red cue ball back up to somewhere where it is now but watch where the red goes he really needs to hit it hard enough so it doesn't go over the corner pocket well I tell you what that's not too bad he's put his hand up it's not the way he played it but he certainly settled for that what a start by Mark Allen by the way on table two a century break, and he leads Fergal O'Brien swiftly, Just a wonderful shot. Nicely appreciated by his opponent. Tap on the table. Excellent shot. He's put Tom Ford back in trouble here. Tom Ford must try and play a similar shot. He's got to clip the while well, he's going on the right hand side as we look. But that wasn't the right shot at all. Now has he got the cover? No. So you wouldn't say it's a chance to win the frame here for Stuart Carrington, but he'd be delighted to be back at the table and try and get some points on the board and cut that deficit of 39 points. One. Well, where the Reds are getting the black back on its own spot will do no harm whatsoever. Nine. I think you would have preferred to be on the pink there. We're still okay on the black. A little bit higher than he would have liked. <coughs> and the cue ball is just travelling away from the red. That's why the pink, if he had been on it nicer, would 16. have been a lot easier to get closer to the reds. So he's, he's going to need a good pot with the rest here to keep the break going. Beautifully. And he's got a perfect angle on the black here. He can stun across to that red. He might even try and knock the blue out. He's going to need the blue to win the frame, so he could try and knock the blue towards the right center and still be on the red here. Playing two shots and one here. No, he tried to take the red out. He's taken the red out and is a potable by the pink. 24. No. I thought he played the wrong shot there, Phil. I don't know about you, but I think he could have really opened the game up there, bringing the blue out into play, still being on the red. And he sort of missed the trick there. 
Yeah, that was sort of cautious break building, as it were, because he tried to leave himself Stuart Carrington, easy on the last red. But in so doing, he sacrificed opening up the game. You know what Mrs. O'Sullivan, Trump and the like would have done there? Definitely trying to get the blue out. Well, not only missing the red, has he left a free ball? Yes, he most certainly has. Free ball. Yeah, but he won't be taking the free ball here. He'll be putting them back. He's got. To, well, he's going to put them back from that position. I'm not so quite sure. It was probably the right thing to do. He might have put him back from where he was. It's an easier hit. Now he's got to be lucky to get away with it. I think this red does cut into the right centre. But it's going to come back to that blue. He's 11 points behind, so he's going to need the blue at least. And the pink, if he's going to win this first frame. So that blue could be the pivotal ball in this frame. He did have a chance to take the blue off the cushion One. a few shots ago. Will it come back to haunt him? Let's wait and see. Still got a bit of work to do just yet. The only thing I'd say about the blue field that it's not in a bad position for a cross double if he gets a good position on the Four. on the blue from the brown, but I'm thinking a few shots ahead here. You're right, Ken, but I think Carrington's chances of removing the blue off the brown are reduced Six. by the fact that the brown isn't on its spot. Yeah, so he's coming around now. This is what he's contemplating. Pot the green, leave a nice angle on the brown to try and either disturb the blue. Yeah, somewhere with a cue ball in between blue spot and brown spot in a line wouldn't be too bad. And then he could leave an angle on the brown to either try and disturb the blue or leave the double. Oh, but you've got to pot the green first. Stuart Carrington, six. The only consolation for Carrington here, Ken. The blue is now Ford's problem. <laughs> It was like he was concentrating so much on where to leave the cue ball. He forgot to pot the green. Three. Now, Tom Ford won't be attempting to take the blue out here. Try and pot the brown. Leave the cue ball somewhere near the left centre pocket. And leave the double. That surprises me. Oh, he's a bit unlucky. It, was, it would have been a good shot. <laughs> the brown not hit the knuckle of the right centre pocket. He would have had a full ball snooker. But I'm surprised he didn't take the brown on there. in this format so often the first frame of a match molds the entire contest one player is going to be very sore after this frame but who oh 
I would think if Ford were to to lose the frame, he would be particularly upset because he was in control for quite some time. No attempt on the pot here, I think. Try and get that cue ball down behind black and pink. It's a big target. Yeah, played it well. Good choice of shot there. A bit of experience from sure Carrington there. No, he's left the brown. No. Well, I tell you, it's, I don't think that's cuttable into the right centre. But certainly potable into the top right-hand corner pocket, the green pocket. But will he take it on? I don't think he will. He's got a very sound tactical game, Carrington, in this kind of position. He's got the ability to, to force Ford's hand, although Ford has played a really good shot there, and it could be exceedingly good. It is. Oh, <laughs> well, they don't come much better than that, Phil. That is incredible. It's quite close to the black, so very difficult to use the side cushions here to try and get it really close to that brown so he's gonna have to come off one two possibly three cushions here to hit the brown yeah he's trying to hit the ball cushion and clip the brown on the way back up but he's missed it he'll be put back oh, I'm gonna miss. Tom Ford for. 12 points Thanks. in the difference so it doesn't make much of a difference just yet, but if he misses it once more, that will put Tom forward 16 points in the lead, so he'll just need the brown. So he's got to be careful here, Sure. This way. He had a good line in the first attempt. I just have to adjust it just slightly. Tough shot this, though. This looks better. Looks very good. Very, very good. Excellent shot, that. Well played. Once again, good target behind pink and black. Had to get out of the way very quickly. Oh, it's very close, but he's left the brown. First frame of the day for both of these two, and already it's really tense. I must say, Phil, though, I do love these frames, do you? I mean, I like to see the big breaks as well, but sometimes when you you see these frames, the tactical battles, the psychology as well that comes into the, into the game, it really is interesting. Who's going to be conservative? Who's going to go for it? Who's going to be more aggressive? Oh, this is a really good shot, this. If it gets behind the black. Almost. Still a good shot, though. Yeah, and it's these kind of frames that have the greatest psychological impact. Because both players in their mind feel as though they might have won it, but only one will. Not wishing to blow your trumpet, Ken, but this was something you were brilliant at. You won a, a very high percentage of this kind of frame, breaking opponents' hearts. <laughs> it's the only way I could win, Phil. <laughs> I did enjoy a tactical battle, all right. Still do, I suppose. 
that UK Championship final against Stephen Hendry. He made six centuries and he was 6 5 up. <laughs> you won all the scrappy ones. Mm. Chance maybe to get the white in behind the blue here. Mm. Not hard enough. But the blue is still the pivotal ball here. Both players will need it if they go on to try and win the frame. What about that World Cup semi-final you played against Ronnie O'Sullivan, that last frame, 53 minutes. It was yeah. a frame like this. Yeah, it was, yeah. 10-9, wasn't it? Back in the World Cup. It was a while ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, how did the cue ball go into sure, the middle pocket him. there? It's actually not too bad. He hasn't left the brown on. I mean, it is potable, but it's very, very tricky. And there's no real advantage of taking it on. Yes, and also, before the cue ball went in, Carrington needed all four colours, and he still does. Well, he hit that a lot harder than I think he needed to. Left the brown out in the middle of the table. Now, what can Tom do here? Will he take the brown on? If he takes the brown on, leaves the cue ball where the brown is, it wouldn't be too bad. But l you can see how straight this brown is. It's very, very difficult. He's got awkward bridging off the cushion. Is he taking it on? It looks like he's shaping up for it. He took it on, all right. Now... Oh, it's not gone in off. Watch the cue ball. It's going close. Oh. Ooh. Stuart Carrington. Now, it doesn't make too much of a difference, really. But what it does is give Stuart Carrington a wonderful opportunity now. Oh. Will he try and remove the blue? I think that's what he's going to shape up for. Brown into the left centre. Cue ball off this top cushion. Try and knock the blue towards the right centre. Delicate shot. Oh. Got the blue out. Forgot about the brown. Well, Carrington there has done Ford's work for him. Ford leads by four points now, so he needs brown, blue and pink. That was nervy, Ken. Very nervy indeed. There you see it. Almost ten minutes since we've had a pot. Well, we've had a couple of cue balls being potted, but as regards the object ball, over ten minutes now. Lots of nerves out there at the moment. There's another nervy shot. I think he's got away with it, Phil. Have a look at this little beauty. <laughs> Have a look at that little beauty. The expression on Tom Ford's face said it all. He walked around the table, realising the trouble he was in. The shoulder slumped. Foul. Oh, miss. Foul miss and the... Cue ball will be replaced by Brendan Moore, which gives me the opportunity to tell you, on the other table, much speedier stuff. Mark Allen leads Fergal O'Brien 2-0. He's breaking the first frame, by the way, 115. He's made four centuries in this tournament, more than anyone else. OK.
foul. Unless... Well, he's playing with the low centre striking, hitting into that side cushion really hard to try and straighten the white up, but he's not achieved it yet. Yeah, I'm not quite sure it's the right route to take, to be honest, Phil. I think, you know, play it off two cushions okay. here. Or one cushion off this top, try and knock the brown onto the side cushion. That would be the, the shot for me. Just like that. Much easier shot. And he's played it very well, actually. And now, after all of those penalty points, Carrington's in front. Well, from Ford's reaction, I can only believe the cue ball did deviate. Left to right, as it were. Eureka! <laughs> Thirteen and a half minutes without a pot. Ooh. Nine. But the frame isn't over yet. <laughs> and I tell you, that blew just about wriggled in as well he's 13 ahead 13 on the table he'd be just trying to drop this into the right center but it's missable i'm looking right down the barrel of it that's not in is it oh it's torn it in 15 and the frame Stuart well Frank. carrington in the pink ford not out of first gear he sputtered there did tom towards the end the cue ball ran off he left the brown on and Carrington cleared to pink. He's drawn first blood. We've just had 42 and a half minutes of Stuart fun Carrington and frolics came down to the final pink. Stuart Carrington was the beneficiary of that really tight, intense frame. So he's looking to kick on. The one thing Ford mustn't do, which he's prone to do, is to dwell needs to forget about what happened in the opener and get on with it and this is something we've seen time and time again during this tournament players breaking off and leaving that red to middle although Ford still annoyed angry aggrieved whatever you like to call it his mind's not there yeah and this is what we spoke about in the first frame that sometimes Tom can carry it with him and he's got to get over it very quickly this short format one let's let Stewart in again good opening red from Stuart Carrington and I think Ken the point you made was really salient it's not just the fact that Ford is like this it's the fact that all of the players on the circuit know he's like this. Yeah. It's a lot to do with body language as well, isn't it? You know, he doesn't hide it. Eight. And players pick up on that and it can sometimes give you a little boost when you, you see your opponent's head drop or shake a little bit. I mean, he, he, he could snap over very quickly as well. He's that type of player. Nine. Talented player. And, you know, one break can change things, but when you have your opponent like that and 
for Stuart Carrington's sake. He'd like to try and keep his foot firmly on the pedal here. Maybe putting this red, he'd be opening reds up. Tom 60. will have to rue that mistake. Sit there and wait for his chance. But this red will certainly open up a few more reds and it could be on pink or black here. Face with a tricky. It's a black he has to go for Phil, but it's a tricky one. Not too much on the cue ball. A lot of right hand side. But this black has to be, and it's a shot that you have to fully commit to. You know you're leaving a red, so there's no hiding here. You've just got to stay still on the shot and fully commit to it. These have tended to drift in towards the cushion. Oh, he's played that well. Very, very well. Great shot. I think in some respects, Ken, I think you'll agree, he was helped on that shot by the fact that the pink, the frame ball pink in the previous Plenty frame, ball. was quite similar. Yeah, and he got down and played it pretty confidently, didn't he? Thank you. 25. Now, this would be an interesting little shot. He's got the red close to the right hand side middle pocket but he has a nice angle on the black he could go into the right hand side of this bunch of reds doesn't have to hit it too hard but still beyond that red into the right center let's see what he tries here yeah that's what he tried he's opened the reds up nicely okay he's not on the red into the right center but it certainly will pot up into the yellow pocket and he may be on another red Certainly into the left centre pocket. He's having a look at a red into the left corner. Yeah, the one through the gap, so it's not too bad. Thirty three. Twice a world ranking event semi finalist, Stuart Carrington. 2018 Riga Masters in Latvia and last season's Gibraltar Open. Came very close to the final, actually. Lost 4 3 to Jack Lazowski. Did something notable in 2017, Ken. He beat Mark Williams in the final qualifying round of the World Championship, denying Mark a place at the Crucible. Yeah, as I said, he's, he's one of those players, you know, he can beat a really top player, put in a really good performance in one tournament, and then he could go missing for a few tournaments. Trying to find that level of consistency that the top players produce. It's not easy because of the standard, obviously, but he's certainly capable on his day. He's got himself in a, a really good position here. 47. Red below the pink. He can put into the corner. He can go for the red into the right centre pocket. Might try and take this red just below the pink. He can brush off the other red and call for the black 48 he has lifted a trophy at the crucible one junior pod black there in 2006 beating Anthony McGill in the final 55. A little bit short of pace, but 
He can pot this red and go up for blue or ball colour here. And the fact that there's a red in the bulk area certainly help his case here. 56. Sixty-one. He's had a quick look at the scoreboard. Still eighty-three possible points remaining. So he's going to need a couple of reds and colours. This red shouldn't be a problem. Try and hold the cue ball for a ball colour. Sixty-two. Nicely played. Now we can pot the green, take that red beside the yellow. Had a quick look. I think he's okay. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. Nice frame ball to have, Ken. Yeah, he's worked this break pretty well. Brown straight forward, just down for maybe the red above the pink or the red just left of that into the left center. Got a big margin for the cue ball to land in. He's gone for the red just above the pink. And it's important, Phil, as well, where you know, particularly 70. in this format, where sometimes the highest break of the group can sometimes come into play. So you want to try and make a big break here if you can. 71. Put Absolutely spot on, Ken. And it happened to you, didn't it, in a former Championship League? Yeah, it did, yeah. I think it was a 134 break that I had to, to eventually be from Tip Choi. But yeah, it does come into play should the players finish on level points and the head-to-head -head 78 was level as well, the 2-2. Two -two. So, uh, as I said, it's important to keep concentrating and try and clear the yeah. table here if you can. Well, I'll tell you what, he's well equipped to make big breaks. How about this? He's in the company of John Higgins, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Mark Selby and Neil Robertson by making three consecutive centuries at the Crucible. Did that in 2017 in a match he lost, actually, against Liang Wenbo. Thanks. 79. So the 86. groups are won on most points gathered. If it's a tie, it then goes on the players' respective frames won lost record. If that's a tie, 87. it goes on their head-to-head. -head. And if that was a two-all draw, 
as Ken was explaining, it goes on the the high break. So Carrington putting himself in good position here. Of course, Trump made the one two eight in the second frame against Jimmy Robertson. Ninety three. But that could be eclipsed. Ninety-four. Second century of the day in this group. Third on both tables. One hundred. And I'll tell you what, actually fourth on both tables. And this one has been terrifically compiled. One. Yeah, it's been a wonderfully constructed break from Shiro Carrington. And you can see the difference of the player from the first frame to the second, getting that first frame on the board. Totally relaxes you. Tom Ford on the other 105. hand. Looks a little bit subdued. Mm, this has been an excellent break from Shiro Carrington. There was one shot fail earlier on in the break where there was the possibility that he could have played for a couple of loose reds, but took the aggressive approach, split the reds up. 110. When he had a nice angle on the black, and, and this has been the fruits of his uh, labour. Excellent. And this will give him great confidence as well. He's one of those players, Ken, when he gets into a groove, watch out seems to be able to concentrate intensely never seems to hurry has that nice steady rhythm around the table yeah yeah he's not exceptionally quick but he's not slow either he's just got a nice pace about him he's got a good solid cue action stays nice and still on the shot he's going to need a, a good black for a total clearance of 132. This is not easy. And it could be a vital ball. Oh, you know, come the end of the night. Will that be significant? It was a magnificent break, but it's not the highest break of the group. What it does do, though, is transport stylishly Stuart Carrington into a 2-0 lead over Tom Ford. We've seen chalk and cheese snooker in this match so far. The first frame, decided on the pink, lasted third 42 break. minutes. The second Tom frame was over in a relative flash. A break of 125 from Stuart Carrington. And that's why Tom Ford, breaking off in the third frame, knows the best he can do is to salvage a draw. And right now, given his state of mind, I think that's unlikely. I think it is important, though, for Four to dig in, not just for this contest, but because he's on next. He completes the afternoon session against Jimmy Robertson. Yeah, and the fact that we saw from the very first match, the way Jimmy Robertson came back against Judd Trump, and here's a great opportunity now for Tom Ford to get his arm going. Easy red. Can finish nicely on the black here. Yeah, things can One. change very, very quickly in this short format. So, important Tom Ford can try and make the most of this opportunity here. Oh, Tom. Wow. Tom Ford won. Well, that's poor. It was very quick on the delivery, very jabby. 
as they say in the press room, as they say in the players' room, when something like this happens. Head scrambled at the moment. Yeah. One. You feel your, the brain is like a Swiss cheese at the moment for poor Tom Ford. It's almost like the stuffing's been knocked out of him. He's not quite there yet, but snookers are required. It looks as though Mark Allen is going to defeat Fergal O'Brien 3-0. shot from sure Carrington tried to bring the pink into play because the black was sort of so close to this top cushion decided a good opportunity try and get the pink and a few more reds into play and he's done that nicely this is the Seven. type of situation where you just want to try and pick up the points here he won't go into the pack again he'll try and pick off a couple of loose reds build up a, a bit of a score well he's gone into the pack I could have gone wrong but he's Spot. okay quickly 3-0 Allen is confirmed and that's worked out nicely for him because he stays on on table two in group B. He's involved in the next match against Peter Lines. <clears throat> he was trying to hold the cue ball for the blue into the right centre. He's overshot it, but no problem here in the green. Just screwing the cue ball into a position where he'll take this red. Close to this bottom left hand corner pocket. Now he's got to try Six. and find a gap here. Try and pot the red. Find a gap of the cue ball between the reds and back up for possibly blue or ball colour. Down the line of the shot, you know, Ken. Seven. It always reminds me when he's playing a shot like that and you look down the line. Also reminds me of Matthew Stevens. Yeah, he's very similar, isn't he? By the way, if you want to see a truly magical break, check out Stevens' closing century against Karen Wilson yesterday. It was an absolute splendid effort. Oh, oh wow. Well, would you Sir believe Callington. it, Phil? 19. He's done all the donkey walk and he's missed a straightforward red, holding for the pink, just trying to hold the cue ball here. That's all he was doing, but he, he could have stunned the cue ball towards the pink and the right hand side cushion didn't have to try and hold it oh. well okay. what can tom salvage here he's in the last chance saloon you would feel tom ford he's got to do something one 
that's the kind of error from Carrington that can turn frames, matches, even groups. He's just contemplating here. Does he play for the red beside the black, or does he come back up for a couple of loose reds around the pink spot? And he's come back up for the, there's a red right in the middle of the pack. I think he's come far enough, to be honest. Seven. Yeah, he's on the... Eight. Yeah, you'd feel he's just got to make the most of this. Travel a little bit further than he would have liked for the pink he's got to use the rest again it's a little bit careless he may have to take the blue up into the green pocket he's come back to look at the pink again but rest required just makes this shot a little bit more difficult than he would have liked especially considering using the rest he overcut a pink in the first frame It looks to me that he doesn't like using the rest. He sort of decelerated a little bit on that. This is tricky. Played it nicely. Well played. 50. And that was a good shot, and that'll make him feel better. May hold a spot here. And now he can go into the pack, develop some reds. He had a nice angle there on the pink. Twenty one. Tom Ford, twenty one. We're still deep into the second match on table one of the day, but the third match on table two is underway. Peter Lines up against Mark Allen. And if Peter Allen Lines can six. win that match, he would be in a very powerful position. I'm not going to say that was the worst possible kiss because he might well have just nestled in behind the red. At least he can see colours. But it wasn't exactly friendly. Had he potted the, the red to the middle of the pocket, it might have all been different. Oh, ball. Stuart Carrington won. Ball didn't find the ball cushion, so he's 
left a couple of pots on here for sure, Carrington. One into this bottom right-hand corner pocket. Just wonder will Tom Ford try and swing that cue ball up towards the yellow. Well, he tried it. Nice little kiss on the green. But once again, the target in behind the yellow is quite big. It's a good target for Stewart here. Not easy when the red is so close to this top cushion. That's pretty good. Very, very good. We saw a brilliant safety exchange yesterday in your group, actually, Ken. Oliver Lyons and Kyron Wilson. It wasn't a lengthy exchange by any means. Little more than a handful of shots, but it was so top class. Unlike that shot there. cue ball so even if he can see the thing to pot it this is a real pressure ball Stuart Carrington won. Tom Ford. Six. <coughs> Don't often see that, Ken. Clearly he thought it went and but it didn't. Yeah. Well, it was pretty tight, obviously. Stuart Carrington won. Tom Ford. Well, Tom Ford can't take advantage. He's really struggling at the moment, Tom Ford. Stuart Carrington would like to get this frame over as quickly as possible. It's not straightforward from here, but he knows his partner is struggling. And he's getting chance after chance. And he really wants to take advantage of it. Once again, it's not too bad. He's got a slight angle on the yellow, but I'm not quite sure where he's going to be able to get down to the, the reds here. Sometimes, Phil, when you play this shot, you get so much top spin that it sort of stops the cue ball up in that same area. May just have enough of an angle on it. Yeah, he was okay. If it was a little bit straighter, sometimes the top spin takes hold of the cue ball and keeps it in the in that particular area. But <coughs> well, he's played that very well. In light of the fact that Judd Trump and Jimmy Robertson played out a two-all draw, victory for Carrington would take him to the top of the table. A 3-0 win. That would be like manna from heaven. But it's still quite a way off. Not an easy table whatsoever.
Well, that was an excellent recovery shot. Now, Six. the shot to play here, Phil, is pot the red into the left corner, cannon into the red and black. The black will be released and head towards his bottom right-hand corner pocket. Doesn't have to hit it too hard, just a nice pace on it. As long as he doesn't catch the red full ball, he'd be okay. This could win him the frame, this, and the match. Oh. Cut the wrong side of the red. Seven. Have a look at where he hits the red here. Yeah, he hits the top of it instead of just behind it. And try and knock that black towards this bottom right-hand corner pocket. So it's gone wrong. He's going to play a safety shot here. Try and get the cue ball behind the blue. <laughs> well, he did try to play a safety shot. It's, it's rolled off slightly, and he's ended up putting the yellow. <laughs> Nine. Yeah, at quite slow pace, going down towards the ball end, it definitely goes left to right. It cost Ford in the first frame. Here, Carrington's the beneficiary of two extra points, but he could have laid a very telling snooker. Well, it's not too bad. Gave him the opportunity to pot another red, and well, it's not a bad kiss on, on the yellow there. Okay, you can't pot the yellow, but you can certainly pot the brown into the right center. As long as it's not straight, and he's got some sort of an angle, he can get down towards this red. He can not take the green on as well. So if he pots the green and get on the red, Maybe frame a match over. No, that's a good shot. Oh, he's got too much of the cue ball. <laughs> There's a bit of life left in this frame. The match just yet. Yeah. Because so many low value colours have been potted, it's a really low scoring frame. But what a crucial one. Thank you. Stuart Carrington, 30. Yeah, tried to hide the red with the pink, brown and blue, but may have left this red on for Tom Ford here. Not easy, this shot. It does go. No. Got away with it. Seems bereft of confidence, does Ford.
That was so close to what would have been an outrageous fluke. Yeah, quite a clever shot there he played, purposely bringing the yellow into play and keeping the red safe. Oh, this is going close. This is going close. Wow. Stuart Carrington four. Well, he's got a, he's got away with that field. He's had a result really. The cue ball should never have been that close to the bottom right corner pocket, but this red, I don't think Stuart will have a go at it. But he could be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, given the position of the blue, green and pink, if he elects to play the snooker, he's pretty much guaranteed to get it. <coughs> Looks a good snooker, but it's not really see, an easy hit here. Can he get it safe? I don't think he can. Now, half chance for Stuart Carrington. Ten points in the lead. How does he go about taking this red on? And what colour does he try and get on? Uh, cued it nicely. Played for blue. One. He's on the blue. It's not perfect, but cue ball will be travelling down this end of the table towards the yellow. Well, he's not, is he refusing the blue? Well, surely he should cut the blue in here. Doesn't look that difficult. Rainbow. Well, he's refusing it. He's going to play the snooker. And he hasn't played it that Stuart well. Carrington. Okay, he's got a snooker, but let's see, can Tom Ford, what's he going to play here? Can he swerve around it, come off this top cushion, knock the yellow safe? Oh, wow. Foul. Miss. Doesn't want to leave a free ball. <laughs> Stuart Carrington, four. Back. Sorry. Thanks. <coughs> I think it was a little bit easier. Yeah, that's about right. He doesn't have to hit this that hard, Phil. If he comes off this top cushion, try and the knock the yellow towards the left-hand side cushion. Yeah, okay. I think the replacement job is pretty much a good one. It's just a matter of a smidgen yeah, to the right. Looks pretty good now, doesn't it? Slight swerve. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. He overswerved it last time, so just to readjust now. But don't try and hit it too hard. Just try and knock the yellow towards the left. Oh, not this time. And now Five this could minutes. be trouble because he's going to leave a free ball. And Should this time four. he's going to be ball. on the blue. Fifteen points in the lead. Might be too straight on the blue here. You know, he might put it back again. He's having a look at the scoreboard. If he pots the blue, it would count as yellow. Back. 
I think that was very much a, a personal choice. He is a cautious type, and you could fully understand what he's done. Had he attacked the blue, you could understand that as well. Yeah, of course, that 15 points plus the four-point foul, so that was 19 points in the difference. Thank you. So once again, just got to... Oh, that's better. And now maybe he wished he had taken the blue on. Okay, he's 19 ahead. Such as yellow and green required. The black is more favourable for Stuart Carrington, the position it's in at the moment. I think a lot of players in the game would have taken the free ball blue there, Phil. It w even if it was straight, it wasn't that difficult to get close to the yellow. Yeah, it was one of those shots, wasn't it, that was all about personal fancy. You could make a case out for, for both courses of action. Good shot from Stuart Carrington, and it was ni very nicely judged. You may see Stuart Carrington come off the ball cushion here, Forrest. Hit the back of the yellow. Could lay a snooker. No. Got away with that. Yeah, nicely played from Tom Ford. So just like the first round, Phil, it's a bit of cat and mouse again. It is, and as you've said, Ken, the one thing Carrington doesn't want to do here is to move the black. He might reluctantly be forced to do so. Mark Allen won on the frame. Well, Mark Allen has just won the first frame from Peter Lyons as we went over to it. So he's having a, a spiffing day so far. Yeah, Carrington, the main objective was safety. He realised he couldn't mess around playing a really delicate shot from that range, and so the black is now in open play. Played a parlor there. Black and brown, full ball, snooker on the yellow. This is cook around the back of the yellow here. Yeah. And he could leave a free ball. Now this time, well, surely he's going to take the free ball. Four. Free ball. Twenty-three points in the lead, so he's going to need. The free ball and the yellow, but yeah. he's got a nice angle on the black. Put it into the left centre. Come up and down the left-hand side of the table and try and get on that yellow into the green pocket. He could pot the green as well. Come off three, possibly four cushions. The green is his choice. <coughs> Natural green. angle off one, two, three, possibly four cushions here for the yellow. How's the pace? That's not bad. That's pretty good. Two. So 
So this is frame and match ball. Four. What a miserable outing for Tom Ford. Seven. What a pleasing outing it's Seven. been for his conqueror, Stuart, Stuart Carrington. Well, uh, 42 minutes opening frame, a really lengthy last frame. In between, excellence with a century. Carrington wins 3 0.